Hello guys and welcome back to my next tutorial. In this episode we're going to go over a very simple and quick way of visually displaying to the player how much health they have left. To do this we're going to be using a post process effect and just events, dispatches again and just a lot of awesome stuff. So first thing that I'm going to do is show you very quickly what it's going to end up looking like. So this is the player on full health, 90%, 80, 70, 60, 50 and so on. So we eventually we have this. Now, of course you can alter this for whatever you want, but this is pretty good for what I want. Now, post-process effects comes from the post-process volume that you put within the level. You could put it on the player, but I think in the level itself will be a lot better. Now the effects that I've got is enabled and infinite bound, and if you scroll up you should see something called colour grading. In white, no, in global you want saturation to be at zero, the contrast to be at 1.3 ish, the gamma to be at 0.8, the gain to be about 1.4, 1.5 and the offset I've just had a tiny offset of minus 0.02. So in, oh yeah, in the lens tab as well up here, if you go down to image effects, I've also got a min vignette which kind of just closes the edges of the screen down a little bit. You could also have dirt masks as well, just to add a bit more variation to it. So blood, for example, covers the screen. I'm not going to go into that for now because I don't really have the assets for that. But as you can see, this is a highly customizable way of doing things. So if I go to my character, I'm just going to get rid of what I've done. Get rid of health. Yeah and the event dispatcher and in here. So in the third person character blueprint I I'm gonna add in a variable, I'm gonna call it health. And another one, I'm gonna call it max health. Now I've just got mine bound to the two key just to take away the health for testing purposes. You could have it so that when your AI or whatever attacks your player, it calls in a custom event on the player that removes the health and does all that stuff for you. I've just got it bound to the two key just for testing purposes. And yeah, let's get started. So on pressed, we want to get the health. We want to set it. And we want to set getting the health and taking away a certain integer. And put that to the... I've just thought of something else. Instead of using the two key, we'll, we'll still use this, but we'll use a custom event, and I can teach you guys how to properly use signatures and inputs for custom events. So you've got the custom event, you can actually add an input in here. I'm going to call it uh, health to remove. And it's going to be a float and we'll just plug it into there and at the end of this we're going to it's called an an event dispatcher so let's make that real quick i'm just going to remove health if event so we'll just put it there and we want to choose call this will send a message to everyone every blueprint that has this event dispatcher attached to a function or event to run essentially. So on the two key we want to remove health. I misspelled remove somehow. Remove health. And the health to remove I'm just going to put it at 10 to keep it nice and even. Compile this and then go to the level blueprint by just clicking on the blueprint tab up here, open level blueprint, and I've deleted my events already, but you should have the event begin and event tick here. On the event begin, play, what we want to happen is get a reference to the player character. Object, get player. 
dot play character and as play character we want first of all to promote this to a variable I've already got the variable there so I'm just going to set it like that but you won't have this so you just promote it to a variable call it what you want I've called my player ref and as player reference I'm going to bind event to remove health event now the event is going to be our custom event that we've just made that we will just make I can't speak today I'm really sorry um, and this is going to be update post process now we could have this uh, remove health event also bind it to a add health or alter health but for the purpose of this we're just going to remove the health we could actually have it so on the remove health we if we have minus health to remove so if we just quickly on the 3g and dun 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 put that into that and we have instead of 10 we have minus 10 then that will technically add on health so we'll compile that so on update pp oh yeah i know don't be children this is a post process volume here yeah, make sure that's selected in the level right click create reference to the post process and all we need to do is blend weight set blend weight and the blend weight will be one minus okay so play reference get health get max health we want to divide these two so if it's 100 out of 100 then it'll be 1 and if it's empty i.e. the player is dead then it will be 0 but for blend weight the closer it is to 1 the more active that post process volume becomes so what we need to do is minus is we need to take 1 minus that so when it's got full health then the blend weight will be zero which means that the post process will be completely inactive when the player is close to death then it will be closer to one i.e the post process effect will be a lot more active therefore it will be a lot more prominent shall we say so we'll compile that and go back to this and play it so press two gets a lot more press wait what Okay, I've messed up somewhere. Divide the health by the max health, one minus print string. Oh, I know where I've messed up. Uh, third person character. You want to make sure that your health and max health are actually set to something other than zero. So, there we go. So, one, okay, two. You can see that's slowly getting darker until it's completely active, and if we add it back on, it comes back on. Now, you want to make sure that it can't go past zero or one. So what we want to do is just before we set the blend weight, we want to clamp it. So clamp, float. Just make sure that it maintains between zero and one. You can also have it so that when it goes below zero, it's, I mean the health, when the health goes below zero, you could have it pop up like a you are dead screen or something. But that's, not the purpose of this tutorial and it's not supposed to go past zero oh it's because I'm okay if I put that into that conversion instead then it should not go past zero or one and it doesn't there we go anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did, please leave me a like and subscribe. 
and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Um, if you've got any suggestions or feedback for me, please do leave them down in the comments below. I am working on a few of the other suggestions that I've been given. The Futai case is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would, so I do apologise for that. Uh, I can't remember any of the other suggestions. I know that the camera controllers that I did in the last episode have been done. Um, so, yeah, that was pretty damn easy, this whole tutorial. If you found it a bit difficult, don't worry, we all start somewhere, it doesn't really matter where you start from. But I don't want to save this map. Or, actually, yes, I do, because this has got the blueprint in it, save it. I'm just going to put that. Post process map. And there we go. If you guys want to learn more about process effects, I would really recommend Unreal CG. He's really, really good with post process effects. But, yeah. That's just in case you guys want to check out post processing a bit more. I've got a few more videos to do, and then, yeah. Sorry, this is training on. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.